So it's eight o'clock. Welcome to the intersection. It's good to see everyone this morning. Again, my apologies for such a late notice, but I had a cancellation yesterday and I'm, I'm not used to having figuring out a backup plan. So, um, but we made it happen and I'm really excited about this one. I need my own briefing uh, from Doug and to find out where things are at in terms of mental health, because I know lots has been happening. I do know some of the things, but I wanna know all of them. So um, I'm wondering, um, while we give folks a chance to gather themselves and come to this, if we have any announcements. Oh, yes, we have one. <laughs> I was right. ready to put it, put it in the chat. We have um, this Saturday um, at from 9 to 11. It is called, and I'm, just, we're put, I'm putting together a Black conversation um, on yep. mental health. Mm. So we would love for all of those who can be a, um, be there. It would be at Emmanuel AME Church off of Simlinger. I'm getting ready to pull up the um, the flyer and there is a QR code that you can go ahead and register on as well. So That'd I will put that in the chat. You know, one of the things too that I hear and maybe Doug can address this as well, but, um, but within the black community, yeah, there's a stigma in terms of mental health. The question I'd like to raise is where isn't there a stigma about mental health? Yeah. True. You know, like there's a thing, right? There's just a thing. It's a and, real thing. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's a real thing. Um, other announcements. Let me send it. Well, I did do some announcements last week, and I want to remind you that there's an economic um summit conference that's coming uh -huh. here next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off the top of my head. And um and I'll try to put that in chat while we're listening to Doug and moving <laughs> forward. Um, there's also the All America Summit that is here in San Antonio, May 28th through 31st. And I'm just going to keep sending all these things out. These, these things, though, um, cost a little bit more than what I'm normally promoting, but they're also extraordinary events that we don't always get in our you know neck of the woods so it's good to go to those and i know at the all america summit they can use some volunteers which means that your registration would be waived so lucky you you live here you don't have to pay for housing or you already are and <laughs> Yeah, all that, you know. So if you're interested in maybe being a part of that in some way, let me know and um, I'll pass that information on. So any other announcements? I'll have oh. one. Go, Bill. Um, so Sacred offers a, uh, a monthly uh, orientation session on Zoom. And so we we do this for anybody that wants to learn about sacred top to bottom. It's about it takes about forty five minutes, and we demonstrate the whole site, all the features, and everything that that uh, that you can do with sacred. It's a great opportunity if you have new staff members that have come in, um, in your in your community, in your faith community, or in your where where you work that that maybe haven't had an opportunity to see the orientation to to go through it, um, or if you or if your staff have just never had that, that's a it's a great way to to get quick, fast training on, on all the things you can do with sacred. So we do that once a month. The next one is coming up um, February 29th. It's on Zoom. Uh, and so I'll post a link in the chat and uh, I invite anyone who wants to attend is, is more than welcome. Thanks, Bill. And listen, if I can manage sacred.org, anybody can, you know, but the orientation is helpful. It just makes you more comfortable, I think. And I almost forgot a week from tonight on Leap Day, same day that Bill is talking about, I mentioned last week that there is going to be a community conversation called Neighbor to Neighbor. And I sent it out to everybody at the intersection as well as other folks. But um, it's about how to be a compassionate yeah. neighbor during our somewhat complex and sometimes conflicted times. How do we talk with each other, um, our families, our neighbors, um, or people we might not see eye to eye with, how do we do that? And it's going to be led by our San Antonio Peace Laureates, 
So some folks that have long-term San Antonio experience as well as long-term peacemaking and community in our city. So it's a week from tonight, 6.30 to 8. The doors are open at 6. And it's going to be at the Alamo College's administrative offices. They're at 2222 North Alamo. So I encourage you to come um, and much like sacred and learn um, so that you can go into the communities where you lead and serve and, and do the same thing. So um, I hope you'll be able to make it next Thursday, 6.30 to 8. So um, Doug, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Flying by the seat of his pants, I'm telling you. So um, Doug's our regular, we all know Doug, and but I think he has somebody new to introduce today. And he's going to bring us up to date in this series of collaboratives that have happened, things that have grown out of collaboratives. So last week we had Sacred, and this week we're looking at Bridges to Care, Mental Health, things that have been growing um, and really have grown these last couple of years. So I'm just going to hand it over to you, Doug okay. and Nuria. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to give a bit of real quick background on what it is and how we got here. Uh, and then I'm going to let Nuria and Emma, uh, Nuria Diallo Padro, who is our new director for Bridges to Care, uh, Nuria will pick it up from there. And Emma, uh, who is our cohort development coordinator and is working uh, with the churches in the community, she'll fill you in on what she's been doing and what she sees. Uh, and Jerry Gregory, who I don't see on this morning, and Jerry has been with us from the beginning and uh, has been our, I, I call her our, our registrar. Uh, she uh, schedules all the classes, uh, lines up the instructors, registers people, and so on. So let me begin by just saying, um, we, I must go back about at least five years to uh, when I visited St. Louis um, and learned about Bridges to Care in St. Louis and saw how a grassroots um, mental health outreach, support, ministry in churches in North St. Louis was making a really significant impact. And the key there was that people in the churches were being educated and they were providing the support uh, for people who had been traumatized at that point by uh, the, the riots that had happened in Ferguson, uh, Missouri. So uh, seeing that and how well it worked, I thought, you know what, San Antonio needs to do that. So we brought it back. We uh, invited the director from Bridges in St. Louis to several of the uh, Pathways to Hope conferences, and uh, we organized and helped organize a networking session uh, at the um, at one of the conferences, and we and I think the question and at the time was, is this something we want to do? And if we do, who's who's in? And I think what we found was we had probably oh seventy five people there, and what we found is people were very interested. I mean, it was again very grassroots uh, uh, and listening to the community. So with that, we uh, formed um, our steering committee. Uh, we reached out to organizations across the city that were already involved in mental health uh, and in community support and asked them to become part of this effort. And I think we had a really strong level of support uh, because one of the keys to Bridges, and, we'll, uh, and I'll let Emma and Nuria show you the, the trainings, but the modules are effectively taught by people in the community. So this is people in the community supporting the community uh, and supporting each other. And I think that's one of the things uh, that makes this strong is when you engage more and more people in the community. So we have six core modules. We have, uh, I lose count, but I'm gonna say at least 15 different electives um, that, we, that we offer. Uh, interestingly, when, we, when COVID came was about the time that we launched uh, and so it was kind of like everybody else, quick pivot. We did these classes online and uh, they continue to be taught online uh, for the most part. And we are going to be moving, migrating, if you will, back to in-person classes beginning uh, the 1st of April. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in uh, being together um, and being in person, but we also recognize there are times and 
<clears throat> in places where it's more convenient for Zoom. So we'll continue to support Zoom, but we're really going to emphasize the in-person uh, connection. Um, our Bridges was organized, and one of the principles is working with uh, cohorts of congregations that are geographically proximate to each other. They're nearby, they're neighbors. And we know that when that happens, these efforts tend to, tend to last longer and stick together better. Uh, because when you're working with people in your own neighborhood, um, it, it, you have a common interest. And the other thing that happens is you also, in talking to each other, you can focus on the real issues that you have going on in your uh, cohort, in your neighborhood. And so that's the way we've organized. And I think I would say that uh, we've got some big numbers, and um, I'll let uh, Emma and Nuria talk about the numbers that we have. But I think one of the most significant things that happened was in uh, last year, mid-year, uh, we were awarded a grant by the De Beaumont Foundation, um, and they had a they have a program called Build Health Challenge, which is designed to uh, ask to uh, look around the country and to select organizations that are dealing in the grassroots, helping build health equity. And we were, uh, there were 158 applications. Uh, we were selected, uh, at, we were one of 13, and we're the only one in Texas that received that uh, grant. And that has been uh, is really important so that we could have some stability and continue our work. Uh, but it's also, they offer a lot of support to us as a team. And joining us on our team is University Health System the community health uh, department out at University Health. And they they provide a full-time data analyst, Carrie Sways. And so Carrie works with us. And then we also have uh, San Antonio Metro Health, who's our other partner. And they bring a lot of data to the table. And Lisa Fargoso, who is uh, on their staff, is also part of our team. So we have a great team. And it's really, uh, I think, helped give us uh, some more structure uh, and really a, a real sense of discipline. And uh, De Beaumont also, they'll be bringing a person uh, from who's an evaluator uh, to San Antonio to interview us and other people in the community who are engaged in this. Uh, because the, in the end, what they're trying to do is learn about models that can be replicated across the U.S. to help other communities. And so ours was um, ours was picked for mental health. And in particular, we're working uh, in communities that are, have been historically under-resourced, and that's a big deal. Uh, so we, we happen to tick all the boxes uh, for the project that they were looking for. So with that, that brings us kind of up to date and tells you a little bit about uh, where we've come from. And I'm going to turn this over to, I uh, saw Nuria came on. Uh, Nuria, do you want to pick it up from here and talk about what we're doing today and Emma? Sure, thank you and good morning everyone. Um, again, my name is Nuria Diallo Padro and uh, Dr. Emma Alexander is uh, a fabulous uh, support here to work with the cohorts, which I will explain a little bit more about. Um, but I do have a uh, little presentation just as a guide. So do you have something to look at besides me <laughs> this morning? Um, so if I'm able, am I able to share the screen? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you. While you're doing that, Doug, I'm just so excited, even listening to how things have developed. There's It continues to be collaboration. In fact, it's growing, right, in terms of collaboration. It's very exciting to hear. Yes. Um, so I'm going to skip through some of these. It's just, to, again, to give you a visual. But you will see this logo around town. Um, there's pins. So our wellness champions, once they complete the modules, and are deemed a wellness champion, they have a pin that looks like this. So that way it's, they're recognizable and you know somebody that's educated and trained in some, some topics related to mental health. Um, Doug gave our history. I thought it was important for y'all to know as well that um, you know we really just have a very simple vision and mission, right? Ultimately, we wanna educate people on mental health. And what goes more into that is that it's about having a shared vocabulary and understanding on mental health. So 
think about it when you talk when you talk about with youth versus adults they're like there's like we're speaking different languages right so can you imagine when there's a shared vocabulary or shared understanding on the topic so that's really powerful um and then we're really just trying to build a welcoming inclusive uh, supportive and engaged uh, group of communities. So whether they're in their cohorts, which are kind of like little microcosms, or we're talking about San Antonio as a collective or even greater San Antonio, think about the impact of having people throughout the region who understand what mental health is and that it's something that we can actually support each other in, something that we can walk alongside each other, some something that we can actually refer somebody to a resource and not stigmatize them. How powerful is that? And it leads more into us building a more compassionate city, which San Antonio is always striving to be the leader in compassion. So they all connect. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, so what we're doing is, you know, we're building connections, right? So think about I'm just going to use the West side as an example, because I love the West side. I'm an Olu alum. So shout out to the lake. Um, <laughs> and so when you can, when you think about um, on the West side and there's, you know, it's very, very family oriented, but there's also a group of nonprofits. There's, you know, several congregations and there's also a lot of need in that community. So imagine having some of the nonprofits that are making inroads, having some of the congregations that are serving the spiritual and emotional needs of our of our members on the west side and then having all of them educated on what mental health is and when to look for signs that require more than prayer right we love prayer and yes that's something that we should all be doing in some capacity but what about knowing when to pass the baton and get that person connected to a resource so just if you think about that as a microcosm and you look at the west side how beautiful is it to know that we have people throughout the area that are growing and learning in what mental health is and that they're connecting their members to resources. They're connecting each other to resources. They're actually having workshops or educational programs within their, their churches or within their congregations. Um, and recently, for example, we partnered with the YWCA, which is very, very prevalent on the West side. And we were able to have a conversation with families about healthy relationships and how to talk to their teen daughters about signs that are risk factors and signs that are signs of healthy relationships. So it's just to give you an example of the impact that this program is having and the reach that we're having to then help build healthy individuals throughout their life stages, right? So whether we're having a teen or we're having someone who's getting ready for retirement, how do we bridge that conversation on mental health and how to support each other? Um, so that training that we're talking about, uh, I'll actually have a, a, a slide that will show a little bit more about that, but uh, the trainings are available through a variety of uh, different times that you can join in. So if you haven't done this program, you know, keep an eye on those. Um, we're definitely welcome you to become a wellness champion. I have a, you know, for example, I have a background in social work. I have a background in, in uh, vocational counseling, but I still did the wellness champion program and I still found a lot of value in it. So don't feel like, oh, well, I'm, I've been doing, you know, work in the community for 25, 30 years. I don't need this. There's still terminology. There's still nuggets that are very, really valuable. So I would encourage if you haven't done it to consider that. Um, again, I brought about, uh, talked about compassion and about sharing the resources. So here's a highlight of some of the um, trainings, right? So we talked about walking alongside somebody, which is the companionship, trauma-informed care. Now, this is really a buzzword that everybody's listening to these days. And they're like, well, what does that mean? This is the workshop that will help educate you on what that means. And really, it's about using certain terminology and certain even behaviors that change how somebody else will perceive you in that situation. Um, so it's really about uh, bringing the conversation in a way that doesn't re-traumatize somebody in a way that shows more support and less judgment or no judgment, right? So that's really about being trauma-informed. Um, suicide prevention, you know, especially as the pandemic really gave uh, a spotlight to it that people are in so much stress. There's certain uh, demographic groups that are under extreme pressures, and so suicide prevention is really important in all communities, but definitely in San Antonio and specific uh, communities um, such as 
even our youth. Building mental health resources, which is one of the signature uh, programs, is really about connecting our community to understanding what resources are available, whether they be through NAMI, whether they're highlighting, for example, sacred and that sacred connecting people to other resources. It's really insightful to understand what's available in your community. Um, building a mental health program. Now, this is one also that is incredibly important because it shows the communities of faith. It shows other interested individuals that you can find a way to serve your community by building a program. A program can be something that's consistently done, you know, whether you're uh, promoting mental health awareness in your, you know, weekly bulletin in your congregation, whether you're hosting an annual event, whether you're supporting, uh, you know, a monthly initiative. So there's different options and that program, uh, that, that module will show you how to do those programs. Um, the, and then the family and friends, what's really special about that is it's a NAMI program uh, and in our own voice. And those will be the ones that will give you real life testimonies of the impact of supporting each other, walking al alongside each other, but also the realities of what happens when you're going through a mental health challenge and how to come out of that with uh, uh, more resources and, and more support. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the individual electives, but I did wanna highlight that we do it in collaboration, right? So part of this is that we want to build a community of collaborators who are sharing the message on mental health. And so uh, we have a variety of trainings. We have one on grief uh, as an example, and it's not just grief, the assumption that someone has passed away, you can grieve on a variety of different levels and that particular elective covers a variety of topics. And so it gives you more insight into the, the concept of grieving. We do have a, a partnership with CHCS Foundation and they offer the adult and youth mental health uh, that can be for free depending on their uh, requirements for their grants or there could be a small fee, but that one is excellent because it's a comparison to CPR first aid. So just like you have to get CPR first aid every three years or two years, um, the adult mental health and the youth mental health uh, first aid are every th three years. And it also teaches you the just how to role play and how to practice identifying and conversing with someone on uh, when they, if you see like a mental health challenge or that they're distressed um, and they have it in a way that it educates them to be appropriate with that age group and the, uh, the symptoms that they're seeing. So it's a really helpful tool as well. <clears throat> okay, so um, wanted to highlight that we you know have modules for the youth and this is something that's becoming a really special offering. And if there's nothing else that you take away <laughs> from today, besides wanting to sign up for yourself, um, I would definitely encourage you to consider, you know, thinking about who are the youth in your life or in your community that might benefit from this program. Uh, we do wanna make a larger impact on the youth that serves 12 to 18 year olds. And it really teaches, the, teaches them to understand that the things that are happening with their mind, body relationships are not in isolation. And so it's really teaching them, what does mindfulness mean and how does that play into self-regulation? right? How to identify healthy relationships, but also how to identify and set healthy boundaries. Uh, Self-harm is a big issue with um, our youth. And I can tell you firsthand working with youth, I have had to talk with youth about the consideration even of self-harm and how to identify a, a, a safe activity in lieu of that. Um, so, it, it, and, it, and it's one of those that um, they see and hear it from other youth. And so they participate because somebody else was doing it or told them about it. So this is, we can't ignore it. It's something we have to educate and empower our youth as well as our adults on. Um, and even just how to deal with peer pressure, right? Bullying is one of the largest problems that we have and it's connected to someone later having a mental health challenge. And so how do you deal with peer pressure and how do you deal with those issues? So these are just to give you an example of some of the topics that we do to support our youth, but also we educate adults who serve youth. So if you're in an organization, maybe you have a youth ministry, I would highly encourage you to consider doing the uh, adult version of the youth track so that you have the verbiage and the resources that are relevant for our, our teens today. 
Um, these are some additional ones that we offer, talking about cyber safety, youth suicide prevention, um, and the reality is that we have to connect mental health and substance use as co-occurring disorders. And so we um, need to make sure that we're educating our youth and the adults that serve them. All right, so if you haven't heard yet and you're still not clear on what wellness champions are, they are our ambassadors in the community. They're the ones that have taken the uh, at least, you know, typically six modules. They're really immersed in the topics of um, mental health. And in our vision of where this program is going, which is something I want to reiterate, is that our champions are going to be constantly celebrated and included in a variety of um, opportunities. So please know that once you complete the Wellness Champion uh, certification, it's not a one and done. You'll be invited to programming. You'll be you know, invited to, to serve in special events. Um, so there's going to be a variety of ways that we pour back into you as well. And so we welcome you to continue and consider being a, a wellness champion. Um, <clears throat> and then I just wanted to note that, um, you know, in addition to the, the other items that I just shared, is that we have a op opportunity to help our wellness champions in their initiatives. So for example, um, several of the congregations that we work with were indicating um, themes around some, some topics. And so as an example, we're hosting an event this Saturday focusing on black mental health. So it's going to be a community conversation. So instead of having these you know, siloed individual conversations on what's impacting the black community in San Antonio, we're bringing together the community to have a shared conversation so that we can then have some programming that they will collaboratively do as a result of identifying which which congregations have the shared the same shared concern um, and also to educate them on some of the current trends affecting the black community related to mental health. So just to give you an example of how you know bringing our wellness champions and others can really have a great impact. Um, Dr. Emma, would you like to jump in and talk about the value of the cohorts? Gladly. Thank you, Ms. Nudia. Um, to share about that, um, the cohorts, it, it says that it brings strength, but we take it, our relationship with the organizations. We want to make sure that we take local actions with every neighborhood and different challenges. The cohorts, we get to know one another. We're building relationships. We actually are reconnecting. We're calling all the cohort leaders together um, bi-monthly so we can talk about and see what their concerns and their strengths are. We're building relationships, um, going out to some of the events that they're having, um, supporting them as well. Um, I heard Nudia state that we are using some of the wellness champions to be presenters this Saturday. Those who have completed the wellness champions, we have several of them sharing their testimonies, how it has made an impact on their lives, in their church, um, in their communities, on their, on their jobs, how their conversation has changed because of the training. Community transformation comes is because we learn how to connect these resources and we're building relationships. So with cohorts, you're not by yourself. There's other organizations, there's other churches that we can come together um, and meet with. And a lot of cohorts, you may have four or five different churches that come together to build one cohort. Um, and in doing so, they get to share what's happening in their um, um, in their area to make sure that we are working on the things that need to be done. Resources um, to each other and developing new resources. We have people come and talk to our cohort or we'll come and share certain things that we have to offer. Um, we do a lot of in-person presentations in our cohorts because a lot of churches, they will rather have you come to them in person and we don't mind doing that. So if you're part of a cohort and you would like us to come out and speak to your congregation or your organization, we would gladly do that. Um, and then once they have gone through being a wellness champion, they build up their um, wellness um, program in their vicinity. A lot of them now are more to say, okay, I'm now ready to connect to somebody else because we are now doing this and we understand what you're doing. So um, cohorts, groups of wellness champions of various organizations and faith communities in graphic proximity. 
And so we have people that are on in District 1, District 2, on the west side, on the east side. So they're all around the city. And so we are just working with all the different cohorts. Okay, yes. And I would just see that it's, it's 8.30. So we have to be mindful of the time. But I just want to say thank you to everyone. And if you have any questions, or if you have a church that's not or is not aware of your pastor has not um, engaged and not understand, give us a call. Nudia or myself would love to come out and speak to them and let them know how we can engage them. And Because once they buy in, that helps the congregation to buy into what NAMI Bridges to Care has to offer. And it does change lives. It is transforming communities. So thank you. And I just didn't want to cut you... I didn't want to cut you short, am I? I mean, you, 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 if you have more to share, please share. I just didn't want no. to cut you short. So No, no, because I understand timing. <laughs> hey, Peter, I see your hand. Good. You're on mute, though. Sorry, I uh, just wanted to highlight real quick that we've worked with uh, over 2,000 uh, people in our community, and we have... Uh, yeah, uh, about a thousand people that are taking classes or have become wellness champions in that process. So um, it's having a great impact. And Peter is definitely um, one of our, uh, you know, community members. So did you want to jump in, Peter, and say something? Yes, yes. I wanted to acknowledge a couple of things and then ask a couple of questions as well. Uh, sure. First, excellent presentation. Thank you, Doug, Nuria, Emma, and I know Jerry, I don't know if she's on, but uh, y'all are a great team and have been very supportive. We, we launched less than a year ago and we continue to grow it. And uh, uh, just want to just say thank you for all the support and, and the work that you do. Uh, and something that this presentation here, when I first was looking at Register Care, and, and Anne says this every so often, these are recorded. So what I did, I reached out to Anne and said, Anne, can I get that recording? Because I like to share it with my team so they can get an understanding of what Register Care is, and I did that. I took it, shared it, and then we came back and set up a committee and went through, became wellness champions. Four of us became wellness champions and came back to our pastor and to the leadership and said, here's what we think would be very beneficial when we could launch. So just as, a, uh, again, just advocating for that, for those that are interested in the program, this presentation here is excellent that you all did today. Uh, one question that I ask, and just to, to confirm, the number of congregations that are currently in the program and and the cohorts. I know I've heard it, but I just wanted to be sure when I say it that I'm I'm giving accurate information. Yes, thank you so much. Excellent. So that's actually the last uh, big nugget was. So we work with about a hundred congregations throughout the San Antonio area, and what we're doing right now is while we have about we actually have just over twenty uh, official con uh, cohorts. Um, because we're coming in, just we're kind of giving some fresh life to the program and making sure that everything's on track and solid. We're really uh, dedicating uh, the next couple months to just fortifying the ones that exist, especially with the the top three to five cohorts, really get, mm -hmm. getting them going where they're at so that we can kind of let them continue to flourish and then continue to build up and, um, you know, regroup. So there might be, for example, an individual organization um, or a congregation that naturally fits into an existing cohort. That's something that we can have a conversation about. Um, however, the one we're not necessarily going to be starting a whole bunch of new cohorts. We really just want to make sure the program is solid, especially, you know, me coming in with my my business background and just kind of looking over everything. So did want to mention, uh, you know, that we definitely want to pour into the existing ones and we welcome, you know, inquiries just to see where things can, you know, potentially grow into. Um, but again, we do want to make sure that we're supporting our youth and uh, growing that per part of the program as well. Thank you. I Thank really you. appreciated hearing more about the youth development uh, and the breakdown and the the education that's happening. So, yay! You know, Thank kudos you. on that. Yeah. Let me, uh, Anne. Let me interject that we we did receive a small grant from the American Psychiatric Association Foundation. Again, a national grant. Uh, there were eight given out around the United States, and ours was for youth mental health, and we are going to be focusing on the three schools that are closest to Haven for Hope um, to provide youth mental health education, and it's for both the students and the parents, and so we're working on that project as well, 
you know, we were, I was extremely pleased to be able to get that grant. That was a major vote of confidence by a national organization. And they've invited us to come to uh, the American Psychiatric Foundation annual convention and be part of a workshop presentation there to talk about how community impacts mental health. Oh, I want to go along. Or I hope it's recorded. No, uh, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Too. I know. This is so exciting. You know, I think what we found out, Doug, is it's difficult to be a prophet, right? In your own home. <laughs> but it's nice when some of the bigger dogs go, one thing I want to say is that, you know, from the very beginning, you know, in and I work, I work in mental health all the time, and we so often focus on crisis, you know, and all we talk about are what, ha you know, what happens when somebody ends up in crisis. But what Bridges to Care is intended to do is to work in the pre-crisis area before things become crisis, before the wheels come off, before you end up on the street or uh, or in jail or uh, in a psychiatric hospital. So we're trying to change the way that people talk about mental health. We're trying to change the community. And, you know, I, I think we're I think we're making progress, uh, but it is a community wide effort. And that's why it has to be grassroots. Yes. And we have a, a special designation. So for congregations and organizations that take the time to invest in developing wellness champions all the way to completion. Uh, the goal is to have at least three to five uh, wellness champions in that organization so that they can have support from the top down. Um, and those will be deemed behavioral uh, health friendly organizations. And we are building up that designation so that they'll have some recognition in the community. Um, so just wanted to let you know that if, you know, your congregation in some, in some way, uh, is still working on becoming a ba behavioral health friendly um, organization, please connect with me and I'd be happy to like walk you through that process. Hmm. Unbelievable Pleasure. work. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I give a shout out to Molly. She's one of our wellness champions. I see her on here. All right. Well, it's awesome to see all of you really looking forward to collaborating and continue to support our mission for mental health awareness and education in our community. And if I can be a resource, Dr. Emma or Doug, please reach out to us. It's Thank just you. amazing how far it's come. It can also be a, oh, I don't know whether tutorial is the right name for it, but for other efforts that are trying to get started, right? On a grassroots level, whether they have anything to do with mental health or not, but you know, the community saying, you know, this is needed. And I had forgotten, Doug, that we had pulled together and asked people, what do you think? You know, is there a desire for that? that? Um, and that's an important step in the process, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm glad you mentioned that. But that whole thing, you know, coming grassroots and then and 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 working with the big dogs, you know, you know like there's something so necessary. I was going to say powerful, but it's necessary because I'm telling you the big dogs can't do it by themselves. They're not reaching deep enough, right? Don't quote me. Oh, wait, it's recorded. Can you? Anyway, <laughs> Peter, your hands up. I love it. Yes. Yes. Just want to off that, off that point. Uh, and uh, during the um, Pathways to Hope conference, uh, Pleasure to hear Dr. Q English yes. speak, and and that's one of those big dogs. Right? That's a federal program, the Faith Based and Neighborhood Partnership Program, and I know I had reached out to them just to to get more information to see if they were coming back to San Antonio, or well, we might be able to to do it in the future with them. And Doug, so I was I was going to ask, what what do you see there as far as I know that they focus on youth. I know the mental health youth area is one of their main areas, and I know they've been in dialogue with you. Do you foresee any type of, of relationship building there or, or funding opportunities that could come from that that relationship? Well, I wish I saw some funding opportunities. Um, you know, and we, we've we had a relationship with Ben O'Dell who works in that office and works for Dr. Q. Uh, and we've had a relationship with him for the last seven, eight, nine years. So that's been our primary contact. And so we, we visit uh, frequently. 
about what they're doing and we talk about what we're doing. And so when they're when we do see the opportunity to work together, we're doing that. But they they've always been very responsive and Ben has been a great resource. Okay, great. You say in the last couple of minutes, it's uh, 840, but maybe Doug, you could talk just a little bit about Pathways to Hope. And uh, I know, you know, it's in the planning stages, but. Well, uh, again, this year, August 23rd and 24th, uh, Pathways to Hope, the ninth year, can you believe it? The ninth annual conference, community-wide conference on mental health to bring people together out of their silos. Yeah. Uh, and the most, I, I think the most powerful thing that happens is the conversations that occur between sessions. Um, every year, like at last year, I think we 60% of the people that came to the conference had never attended a conference. So it continues to show us that there's not only a need uh, for it, but that, um, you know, people are looking for help. So I can't say enough about the conference. Uh, Justin Lindstrom is chairing it this year and, and last year. Uh, Justin, as some of you may know, had um, brain surgery yesterday uh, in, in uh, Houston. And uh, it was for his, to control his uh, uh, Parkinson's disease, the tremors. So keep Justin and, and uh, Susan in your prayers. Um, we do, we, you know, Found out after the surgery, Susan reported that it all went well. He's doing great. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that, too, because that's part of, you know, Pathways to Hope. That's caring for each other. Uh, and, and keep Justin in your prayers. Thank you. And I think the like always, every Pathways to Hope, we say, you know, this was the best whatever. So they only get better is what it means. Right. And so uh, I'm looking forward. There's going to be one track just on compassion and flourishing. So that's exciting for me um, personally. And it's all about me. But um, so it, I think it's great that, you know, we're going to add that and we just keep expanding and. Um, just really looking forward to it. I do want to know when that that thing is with the American Psychiatric Association. Did I get that right? Yeah. Uh, okay. It will be uh, the first week of May, and I'll send you the dates on okay, that. Okay, good. And uh, Becca, Broon, Becca Broon from San Antonio is also going to be speaking there on a panel. Oh, nice. I mean, when Raul Andrews, the executive director of the foundation, came last year to Pathways to Hope, uh, he was just blown away by what San Antonio was doing. And so uh, that, you know, he invited me, invited Becca uh, to come up to New York and to share what we're doing in, in the community. Right. Well, folks, it's 843. Thanks for being here this morning. And um, thanks, Doug, for stepping up, not just to bringing the briefing today. But, but for and, Nuria, and Nuria and, and Nuria and Nuria and Emma and everybody, but not just for that, but for every all the stepping up all of you are doing in terms of mental health. Um, we all know what it means when you're forming something in the community, it's hard work and faithfulness and commitment and probably a good ounce of insanity or more. And so, thank you all. At NAMI for doing what thank you, you do. Well, thank Great you. Time. All right. Thank see you, you all next day. week. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.